in the house of Reckon, the son of Ami, in Lodibar. And the king sent and fetched him out of the house of Mashar, the son of Amarel, from Lodibar. Now when Mesephus, Mesephus, I'm sorry, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul. Okay, in other words, Saul was the grandfather, Jonathan was the father. And this was the son. And the king is David, who was the friend of Jonathan. Amen? So if you read on in this scripture, David said unto him, Fear not. That's the second verse. For I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake and will restore thee at the land of Saul thy father and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. A year ago today I was uh, had to bring a message to the church and you know how the, 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 the Facebook brings you up with sometime in the past or a year ago whatever today. So a year ago today, I was bringing a message at a church, and I brought a message entitled, um, How in the World Did I Get Myself Into This Mess? Oh, my goodness. And um, what people didn't know that night, I was actually talking to myself. Uh, you know, when the message is over, and you be like, well, I just made it through, and everybody's like, oh, my God, that was what they didn't know was I was talking to myself. And some of those are the best messages, amen? That's right. I was wondering how in the world did I get myself into this mess? So I was looking at that, and um, that night I didn't know, and I didn't really have the answer, but uh, sometime later, you know how God is. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday, we have a minister, he talks, and he's always talking about, we don't know why we say the things we say, or why we do what we do. Sometimes things don't come to you until later. Right. Mm -hmm. So the Lord didn't make me to know a year later. So I don't care how you got in the mess you're in. That's not the point. But what I came to tell you is you don't have to stay there. That's right. All right. You don't have to stay yes. where you are. There's an invite this afternoon All right. that's inviting you out of the place and the situation you're in. And you will hear that later when we tell you, come to Jesus. Yes. I don't get these names too right. Mephibosheth. Okay, so I said like so. Mephibosheth. And then he was in a place called Lobi Bar. Well, I think I should go back a little bit. Let me just go back a little bit. I always try to rush it, but sometimes you shouldn't rush it. Never know. Lonely Bar was a small town, and only mentioned in the scriptures a few times. And some scholars assume that Lonely Bar used to be the town of Debar, mentioned several times in the book of Joshua. Debar's name meant pasture or sheepfold. And it was located in the valley near the boundary of Judea. All right. It is thought by theologians if Lodi Bar is the same time town as Debar, somewhere in its history the name was changed to Lodi Bar. Debar means word or thing. If you add the prefix to that word Debar, it becomes Lodi Bar. And when you add that prefix, Lodi Bar becomes no word, nothing. Mm. The town's name is complementary to the town itself if we go by that description. Amen? Okay. And if we look at it today, that's why it's a little bit If we look at it in today's terms, we would say it was a town in the middle of nowhere. All right. All right. Lodi Bar was first mentioned in connection with Mephibosheth, who was the only surviving son of Jonathan, mm -hmm. and Jonathan was the son of King Saul, yeah. and David and Jonathan were best friends, right? All right. 
right? The Bible says that they're in a love that's, I think, stuck closer than the brother, Jonathan and David. I'm, I'm sorry. All right. Yeah, Jonathan and David. Amen. So the point I'm trying to make now here is the grandson, the great grandson, living in Lodi Bar. The town of Lodi Bar. Let's talk a little bit more about that town, amen? All right. Town in the middle of nowhere, town where nothing's going on, town where you don't want to visit, a town where you don't want to go. Amen. Let's just think about it like that. <laughs> Nothing was going on there. Okay. No pasture. Nothing was growing, amen? Mm -hmm. What was the point, amen? All right. But here's the thing. Many people in life today, many people listening to me this afternoon are in a state of loneliness. People are in a state of feeling like they are all alone, they're by themselves. Even out of the main stream of society, they're not part of it, there's no social activities, they're not doing nothing, like I said again, nothing's going on. There are a great many others who are right in the middle of life's hustle and bustles and find themselves alone. And then they are dislocated, they are misunderstood, they are not included. Amen? Both physically and psychologically, people are and will be alone from the orphan to the mega star surrounded by thousands, from the homeless to the struggling single mother who's taking care of her children all alone, people are still alone and forgotten. Well, Lodi Bar was such a place. The very meaning is not having and no pastor. It was a town forgotten people, included like Mephilashek, son of David, best friend of Jonathan, who was the son of the king of Saul. In Lodi Bar, we would find lost, unskilled, uneducated, outcasts from society. Those who people would scorn, talk about, look at them, turn their nose up at them. Amen? That's how you would find in Lodi Bar. And we live in Lodi Bar, some of us even today. All right. Some of us are walking around in a crowd, but feeling all alone. All right. Amen? We must remember as Christians that everybody that's in Lodi Bar, in a state of Lodi Bar today, are not there because of their own doing. Not everybody. Right. We like to look and judge and think, that's why they're there, because they didn't do this. Because they didn't do that. Not necessarily is that the case. Right. All right. And we have a perfect example of that today with Mephilim, the That's right. He was not in Lodi Bar because of something he had done wrong. Mm -hmm. We are told that he was crippled in both feet. Mm -hmm. Second Samuel 4 tells us about this, that he was under the care of a nurse while his father Jonathan was in battle. So think about it. He was under the care of a nurse while his father Jonathan was in the service and the armed forces somewhere, amen? Uh -huh. And when the word came out that Jonathan was Shilobith's father and his grandfather were killed, the nurse grabbed him and she ran. But she dropped him and she injured both of his feet. Uh -huh. He was only about five years old when this happened. And he had to spend his day being cared for by somebody else. Or living off of handouts of a few people. Amen? But it was not his fault. That's right. And I came to tell you this afternoon that some of this is not your fault. All right. It was not his fault that his father died. Mm -hmm. It wasn't his fault that the nurse dropped him. Yes. It wasn't his fault that there was no doctor who could repair his situation. It just was not his fault. Mm -hmm. And we come to tell you this afternoon that it's not your fault either. It's not always your fault that you were molested as a child. All right. It is not your fault that you were raped. Mm -hmm. All right. It is not your fault sometimes that you were abused verbally and physically. Mm -hmm. right. It is not your fault that you had no father, no mother. It is not your fault that you had to raise yourself right. and sometimes raise your parents instead of them raising you. It is not your fault that no one ever gave you the guidance that you needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, 
school, some of us can remember even the guidance counselors didn't lead us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. right. We weren't ever always, a lot of times in my day, led to think we could be anything other than something that they wanted us to be. Mm -hmm. Amen? So it wasn't his fault, Meshavimuth. It's not the, everybody's fault that you see these conditions, and it's not your fault that you weren't provided with a ed good education that inspired you, that no one poured life into you. It's not a lot of people's fault today. Some people can't afford to send two and three kids to college, mm -hmm. and sometimes they have to make a choice. Amen. That's not the child's fault. Amen. Amen. It's not your fault sometimes that no one built the confidence in you to know that we say it doesn't matter where you came from, only where you want to go. Yeah. All right. And we invite you to come out of Lodi Bar this afternoon. All right. It's not your fault. Even today, it's not people's fault that businesses are closing down, Amen. that the politicians are fighting one another. That's right. It's no one's fault. And we certainly can't blame anybody for COVID. No one knows where that came from or where it's going. Remember, this is America. Mm -hmm. We put a man on the moon. <laughs> you pick up your cell phone today My and you talk to somebody in Africa That's right. within a few seconds, yet we can't figure out what COVID is about. <laughs> I have to believe there's some things God don't want you to That's figure right. out. And some things are just his will. That's right. That's right. And what we have to do is accept that. Accept. So we're back to the story. We are always so quick to assume that people who are in situations worse than our own have had to do something wrong to get that way. Your pets. Yes, right. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they get a lot of promises. 
prophecies on them, and they wonder why that prophecy didn't come forth. Well, actually, a lot of promises are with conditions, amen? All right. And with a lot of prophecies, prophecies you can't just sit back and do nothing. So it was prophesied you're going to be a lawyer, and you still don't want to get out of fifth grade. Amen? That's right. Mm. Then you say the prophecy was a lie. <laughs> the prophecy was what you could have been had you done what you could have done. Amen? Amen. That's right. Voting by doesn't inhabit just the poor people. It is not always a physical place because there may be people who are just disenfranchised right in the center right in the center of the middle and upper class. You think you're the only one going through, amen? Mm -hmm. You think you're the only ones with problems? Mm -hmm. You think you're the only ones feeling like giving up? No, that guy down the street with a million dollars is feeling like giving up too. Mm -hmm. Amen? Money is real good. Yeah, that's right. And it can make you happy for a season. Yeah. It's temporal. But if you want joy, come on. real joy, real joy. And let Jesus yes. come into your heart. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. More than we might think people are messed up on the inside, but we got to understand it's not what's looking like on the outside. Mm -hmm. I heard Smokey Robinson back in my day. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> he said, people think I'm the life of the party. Because uh -huh. I tell a joke or two. Yeah. But deep inside, and you can see what's going on on the inside, deep inside, I'm blue. Amen. So it's not what it looked like. Amen. Ask your neighbor how you doing today. How you doing? But it's because you see somebody might have been abused as a child. You don't know who's sitting beside you. Somebody might have been molested. You don't know. Yeah. Somebody might be battling homosexuality, drug addiction, alcoholism, adultery, on, acute depression. Yeah. Something has affected their mind. Yeah. My God. Somebody beside you might have causes that make them not sleep at night. Somebody beside you might be crippled from being who God intended them to be. You don't know, but I know sometimes I would get to church and I had to fight to get there. Fight to stay there. Fight when I got home. Hallelujah. So you don't know what's going on with the person next to you. So instead of looking at people with a critical eye, you need to look at them with the love of Jesus. You need to look at them and tell them, I don't know what you're going through, but we're here for you. I don't know where you come from, but it really doesn't matter. What can I do to help you? Where are you trying to go? You've been broke down on the side of the road and somebody come up and say, oh, what's going on? And you say, I got a flat tire. And they get back in their car and pull off. <laughs> what did you stop for? I wanted some time. Why do we go to church? So if I said, somebody asked the question, why do we sing? Do we lift our hands to Jesus? What do we really mean?
some things I see going on. Amen? Amen. You got people standing in lines for hours for food. Amen. Hours for food. Amen. 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 And if things are so big, why hasn't more churches got under the burden of things being so big? The churches are building up treasures. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Still not taking care of the widows. Still not trying to see about that mother that's struggling. Amen. I heard one preacher say the church should be the last place you come. You try everything else, then you come to us. Amen. No, it wasn't supposed to be that way. Amen. God didn't shut the doors for us to get richer. I heard on the news, I think it was some 60, I forget exactly how many, but lots of the mega churches, lots of the mega churches got millions of dollars doing this situation. I don't know what they did. I hope they distributed it. I'm just saying, I know one thing, they got it. Well, what is it? 60 million or 600 million went back to the government for little people like us that didn't get what we were supposed to get. Amen? And why don't we get a lot of things because we don't know how to get it? Mm -hmm. And then there's a part of us that won't let nobody tell us nothing. We know that. So you got to pray before you go to people today. Amen? Amen. Amen. But that doesn't stop our job and what we're supposed to do. Amen? Amen. We are still supposed to do what God called us to do. And this afternoon, God is letting us know that we need to tell somebody. Amen? Amen. You say, you is beautiful. Amen. You is pretty. In that movie. Amen. Mm -hmm. You can do this. Amen. The only thing standing between 